just a little glimpse of my story. Um, so I was in a nine-year relationship that formed who I am now, but also emptied the very part of me. Looking back, I can see that there was a constant tug of war in joy and shame, and a push and pull in clarity and confusion, a blend of intimacy and betrayal, and enabling physical addiction and emotional dependence. I had been consumed with the dream of getting married, and even though my ex was never fully able to commit, I knew that I had created a stronghold and married him in my heart. And in that false attachment, any moments of betrayal, whether through a screen or with another woman, caused me to live in a constant state of never being good enough, of never being chosen or wanted. In these same moments, I had been introduced to Christianity by him and his family and gave my life to Christ, but while God was quietly whispering my worth in Christ's love, my ex began to doubt that God even existed. And while it hurt to witness him in his struggle, I couldn't help but carry it on as my own burden. I battled his questions, his doubts and fears, and fought against his addictions. But in this battle, I was leaning on my own strength, and his demons surrounded us. Because I had always struggled with feelings of unworthiness, I never fully trusted in God's plan for my ex's life or for my own. I was grasping onto the only dream I knew for fear that I would lose what I thought was best for me. It became my life's purpose to call him back towards the God that I had been introduced to in an attempt to control the security of my future happiness and self-worth. When our relationship ended, I was left to confront who I had become, how I was living in an idealized fairy tale. But where did my ex's story end and where did my story, my identity, begin? Because I was so caught up in our combined sin and doubt, I suppressed my own faith. I didn't realize that while I was fighting so hard for his healing, I was not fighting in my own battle, allowing God to take the lead and win over my demons. My own addiction to porn was downplayed, my relationship with God became stagnant, and I wasn't questioning the lack of true self-worth that I was not feeling. But this is not who God calls me to be, or where to make my bed and lie down in. Only now, in the letting go of control over my plans, in entrusting him with someone else's journey, in slowly letting go of the ways I see myself or assume I'm seen by others, I see more clearly that I am secure in my identity purely through the love of Christ. No matter how much I weave my self-worth into an imperfect human being or of the things of this world or into whatever strongholds and bondages we might find ourselves trapped in, I know that the one who knits us together in our mother's womb can also unknit the ties that we make for ourselves. With delicate hands, he slowly untangles, knowing that it will cause us pain, but he also knows that in the unraveling, it will bring us redemption. Romans 8.21 says that creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. So, two years in the making, uh, this is my poem called My Bed. My bed was a soft, clean refuge to dream. My bed was a pit of false hope. My bed was a wasteland of lust-soaked 200 count sheets, skin to skin ripped apart, wreckage in the aftermath of two unbound souls. In one sentence or less, do I talk about the first time? In the slow stillness of a summer afternoon, our hearts were innocent, pounding with nervous excitement as you looked me in the eyes, telling me you loved me. Do I talk about the second first time? The shame of sin eventually faded and the yearning to be intertwined once more deceived and blinded us from our reality. Do I talk about the last time? Eyes closed, regretting, knowing you would be leaving, longing to absorb anything close to love, knowing you would be leaving. Do I talk about the second last time? The cord pulled tighter as the flesh of another is twisted into our tangled web and I can't break free and I am one more body in the pile of filth, bones tossed in the devouring. Every time in between is a blur, but each one had its moment, a moment to weave its string into my skin, dug deeper, torn wider. I'm left to cut away, to rip the stitches out and force the wounds to heal. My bed is a reminder of when time seemed to be still, quietly strangling, each moment tethering. I lie in this bed I've made, but 
I've been told of steady hands, and my heart stirs in the glowing, burning, peeling, healing. My bed is a place where hopes and dreams come alive, where rest becomes restoration and peace is freedom. With groggy eyes, I awaken to the tugs of his gentle hand. I know he is not far pulling at my heartstrings. The bond that I knotted and knotted and knotted together, all untied, strings clipped. Thank you.